Are you considering solar for your RV, but you're afraid of the cost? Who's going to do the installation? <laughs> Maybe the overwhelming nature of it all? Well, you don't have to be. Hi, I'm Sherry. And I'm Hutch. And this is Hamlet, our vintage rig that has been our rolling home since the fall of 2012. Together, we call our adventures Freedom in a Can. And we have been all over this continent, discovering the land that we call home. And the number one thing that's allowed us to do that has been our solar power. It's allowed us to live, work, and play, whether we're on the coast of Maine or even the deserts of Arizona. For the past nine years, we have learned how to squeeze every last drop of energy out of our small solar powered system. Today, we are gonna share with you our six simple strategies for maximizing a small solar powered system. Man, she's got that down. Try <laughs> saying that six times fast. So whether you're just starting out or upgrading after years of running a gas generator, incorporating these strategies into your plan now will help you build out a system that will meet your needs. As seasoned tent campers, we like to think about our rolling tiny home as a super comfy cabin rather than a small house. We focus on powering just what we really need and it's been enough to sustain our lifestyle and mobile business. After all, our goal of our downsize was to simplify our life, not overpower it. So let's get into it. Number one. One way to keep the batteries topped off is by installing solar panels on the roof of your RV. These panels will send a charging current anytime they are illuminated, whether you're set up in a campsite or rolling down the highway. And since most roadways have an unobstructed view of the sky, this can be an effective strategy. But if you've got an engine, you can take advantage of another charging method, regardless of the time of day or weather conditions. So there's two types of battery chargers from Renogy that will help you effectively do this. The DC to DC charger connects to your vehicle's starting battery and boosts the charging current back to the house battery. We installed one of these last year on my parents' 2017 Toyota Highlander, which tows their 22-foot travel trailer. You can find the link to this installation video in the description below. The dual input DC to DC onboard battery charger does essentially the same thing, except that it can also accept a solar panel input as well as an engine input. In this way, it serves the dual role of battery isolator and solar charge controller. We installed one of these in the back of our 2015 Nissan Frontier to charge a 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery which runs our 12 volt refrigerator. Now this has been an awesome 21st century upgrade to our vintage camper life. You can also find that installation video in the description below. Number two. When living with solar, you have to think about the energy that you can collect and store in a battery bank, just like a savings account at your local bank. You can only spend what you can collect and save. So an electron saved is an electron earned. Simply put, if you can use the 12 volt DC power directly from your battery without having to use an inverter to change that power to 120 volt of AC power, you will maximize your energy savings. Big solar systems with large battery banks can certainly power just about anything through a large inverter, but the inverter itself uses energy to do that, and that eats into your daily solar savings account. Our DC appliances include 12 volt LED light strips, a 12 volt fantastic vent fan, a USB charging station for all of our small electronics, which also keeps them organized. When we first started out on this journey back in 2012, we did not fully comprehend the impact that using DC power over AC or LED lighting over incandescent would have on our house battery. During our initial remodel, we pulled a string of rope lights off our back deck and hung them up in our tiny living space. This 60 watt AC string of lights had to be plugged into our inverter, which ran our battery down very quickly. By switching over to LED light strips and connecting them directly to DC, we took our energy use down to 8 watts per strip, and the lighting is even brighter. 
So spend that extra time to do their research for those 12 volt and DC appliances, coolers, lighting, fans, appliances, etc. Especially those that you're going to use for a few hours each day. Investing in these now is going to pay dividends over the long haul. Number three. So recently, Ivan Penn of the New York Times wrote, the cheapest electron is the one you don't have to produce. But limiting your electricity doesn't mean going without or suffering. It just means using a little bit of creativity, which is not unlike deciding to make a home and place a business out of a vintage camper. Now, all across America, electricity powers a lot of cooking appliances, but that's not the only way to make great food. Sure, we could run a toaster, electric skillet, Instapot, coffee maker, microwave, all on solar, but we'd need a lot more panels and a lot more battery. And besides, where am I going to put all of those appliances in 72 square feet? Instead, we use a flat top griddle on our two burner propane stove or outside on the campfire to make everything from toast to pancakes, from paninis to veggie burgers. We reheat our food in about five minutes. We saute vegetables as well as bake scratch-made recipes in our Banks Fry Bake. The stovetop kettle and the French press makes our daily coffee and an Amish non-electric waffle iron makes the best Sunday brunch you've ever had. We are serious camping foodies who never shy away from making incredible food even as we limit our need for electricity. The only electric kitchen appliance we even have is an immersion blender to occasionally make smoothies, sauces, and more. People think we spend a ton of money on propane for our heating and cooking, and it's just not so. We spend between $100 and $125 annually. And you can compare this with the $1,500 we used to spend on heating our traditional home. Number four. One of the questions that we get all the time is, can you run an air conditioning unit with solar? Well, it completely depends on how many panels you have and the size of your battery bank, as well as the size of that AC unit. With a small system like ours, we cannot run AC, but with this full-timer strategy, we simply don't need to. In the summertime, we typically travel north into much less humid climates. We try to park our vehicle in the shade while keeping our 100 watt folding solar suitcase out in the sun with a solar panel extension cord. This allows us to keep our living space comfortable through the passive cooling of the forest canopy. We don't need to waste battery power by running the exhaust fan all day long. It's surprising how cool it can be with just the bedroom window open and the fan pulling air across us at night. But here's an important tip. Make sure your extension cord is no more than 20 feet long or you'll lose some efficiency through transmission loss in the wire. Number five. This all may seem very basic, but here's where some prior planning can make a big difference in your system's performance. Solar panels produce the highest current when they are appropriately angled to the sun. If you use portable panels, you can place them out in the best spot of the day without having to move your vehicle. We're always thinking about our portable panel and its angle to the sun. Before we go to bed at night, we'll shift it to face the rising sun in the morning especially during the summertime when the sun rises earlier than we do. Likewise, throughout the day, we'll pay attention to where the panel is in relation to the sun's path across the sky. If we go out for a hike, we'll place the panel in an optimal spot for the middle of the day, which is the best light to charge. Portable panels can be combined with rooftop panels to get you a little bit more extra wattage on those low sun days. And we've seen all kinds of vehicles use this technique from schoolies and RVs, from vans to vintage campers. And of course, we have a full installation video for you highlighting our kick-ass Renogy system. And you can find that link in the description below. Number six. Before we talk about excess power, let's talk about batteries for a minute. Now what most people don't understand is that not all deep cycle solar batteries are created equal. There are four different types and they simply couldn't be more different. You'll wanna check out our article outlining a side-by-side -side comparison of four deep cycle batteries in the video description below. But I'll cut to the chase. 
While each battery type has its benefits, the cost per watt hour of a lithium iron phosphate battery is the absolute lowest. LFPs may have a higher price tag up front, but it's going to save you a ton of money in the long run. Now that we have shown you how to get the most out of your battery purchase, let's talk about usage. Once your house battery is full, any additional power collected by the panel will go to waste unless you use it. Before we head out for a day of fun, we check our battery status via our battery monitor. If the battery is full or close to full and the panel will be illuminated for much of the time we will be gone, we use the excess power to charge some of our devices like laptops, a portable speaker, camera batteries, double and AAA batteries, our phone, etc. When we return, both our house battery and devices are full and ready to use. This is also a great time for using high wattage appliances as you can keep your battery full and just use the excess wattage coming in from the panel. Once again, simple pre-planning, but extremely effective, and it doesn't require the purchase of an additional battery. Six simple strategies for maximizing a small solar powered system. Six simple strategies for maximizing a small solar powered system. While there is some science to it, it is certainly not rocket science. If you use creative ways to keep your energy needs low, you can easily thrive with a small solar powered system. And if you'd like to learn how to size a system that'll meet your needs, check out our Solar 101 video and you know where to find that link. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see, see you on, on the, the road. road.